Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, and today we're going to be talking about pump and dump schemes. Whether it is crypto or stocks, regardless, um, they are borderline scams because either way, you're going to lose an insane amount of money. There is the 0.00001% chance that you might be early enough to make money, but just like a scam or a Ponzi scheme, um, the amount of people that are going to get destroyed, having their finances ruined because of this, you don't even want to be a part of it. You don't want to perpetuate these at all. It's not like, oh, but if I'm one of the first people in it, then I might make money. You're not going to hear about this as one of the first people. No one is going to, uh, you know, help you come in and be on the ground floor. If you get a message like that, well, actually, uh, that's one of the specific red flags of a pump and dump is that they will target demographics that uh, don't know very much about these things. And uh, they will also try to make it seem like you got lucky and you've been chosen to be a part of this elite opportunity or something, right? So what exactly is a pump and dump? Uh, according to Investopedia, Pump and dumps are illegal schemes to boost a stock or securities price based on false, misleading, or greatly exaggerated claims. Um, the difference in crypto is that there's, you know, founder anonymity, very low barrier to entry to create a cryptocurrency, you know, very little regulation. So it's much easier to get away with committing these crimes on uh in on cryptocurrency projects and because they typically target micro and small cap assets um you know it's stuff that people don't know very much about maybe there's a lot of complexity there's so many different things that go into this but um people who are guilty of running pump and dumps are subject to heavy fines but it, again typically this is more so for stocks and uh they're increasingly found more often uh, in cryptocurrency projects. And that's, that's from Investopedia anyways. So what I wanted to come on here and talk about was red flags for identifying these in crypto and just a kind of general PSA to, uh, you know, not get involved in pump and dumps. And the easiest way to not get involved in pump and dumps is to not be, you know, out there looking for, something that you think is going to a hundred X or trusting something that's offering you thousands of percent interest, which is silly that people believe that. Um, because I mean, even just logical common sense needs to be applied to some of these things. Like how can a project make you 20,000% interest? Um, uh, because wh where does that money even come from? And, uh, so some of the red flags to identify, a pump and dump are there's tons of press, tons of hype around this uh, around this project. Now, obviously, press and hype alone could just be that it's a good project, but uh, this is always accompanying a pump and dump. Typically, uh, if it's a grandiose one, right? Well above average gains recently and uh, price action becoming parabolic, so it's returning way better than you would expect it to be again. Uh, and the price being parabolic again, both of those previous points could apply to something that is good like Bitcoin. Um, but we're talking about very unknown projects, uh, very small projects. And if they just start doing insanely well and they're getting thousands of percent and all this stuff, yeah, definitely be very, very skeptical. All right. Uh, Safe Moon is a great example of that. Uh, the cryptocurrency moves drastically without any justification or changes that have actually occurred, right? So they didn't hard fork. They didn't do anything. It was just a regular Monday and uh, a cryptocurrency goes 100%, 200, 300, thousand percent increase. That is uh, definitely a possible, a possible sign that it's a pump and dump and uh, it's like the beginning of a pump and dump. So don't don't buy after the thousands of percent, because if anything, it's more than likely to drop after that. Uh, the reason that people buy in after the thousand percent gain is because pump and dumps typically run in four phases. Uh, the acquisition phase where, um, 
you know, the people who are starting this are actually gathering all of the all of the actual crypto, but they're not going to buy it all at once because they don't want to, you know, have this thing go crazy right off the bat. They're going to do a very, very casually making buys over a period of time. And then once they get into the next phase, the promotion phase, then they start, you know, going ham, getting everyone involved, um, starting fake telegram groups, paying tons of money for fake accounts, all these different things, paying influencers because they've got a decent budget um, or whatever it happens to be. And again, it's important to consider that this could be like the founder who created a coin specifically to pump and dump, or this could just be you know, a, a group of individuals who have found some random project and the project itself, you know, isn't doing anything wrong, uh, but they could find something to pump and then dump as well. So you got to keep that in mind. It's not necessarily uh, the creator like it was with like, or the founder, like it was with Safe Moon. It could just be a big player came in and boosted something like Mark Cuban did recently. And we will talk about that momentarily. Um, Typically, another good red uh, red flag is they're on low cap stocks and cryptocurrencies, as I mentioned, because they need to be low cap so that they can move a lot and uh, and get the price really going and make it go parabolic and you know fulfill a lot of the other things that I previously mentioned. Uh, the target demographic is never an experienced intermediate crypto user, right? They're not marketing pump and dumps to myself they're not marketing them to other you know well-known creators who actually know what's going on and we would look at those and say this is a pump and dump they're not marketing those to people like us they're marketing them to new people who are just getting into crypto um the same people who are looking for success courses and you know looking for the next 100x project the people who are the most likely to get scammed in general is the same target demographic for a lot of these projects so you got to keep that in mind and their messaging and their marketing and everything is the exact same uh as those like predatory success guru all that kind of stuff all the same marketing with insane expectations right like saying like you're going to make fifty thousand percent on your on your money <laughs> um fifty thousand percent guys it's like what you can put in like ten dollars a hundred dollars and make thousands upon thousands and thousands of dollars like where would that money even come from come on uh they have a huge social media presence kind of out of nowhere so for example i've seen many projects where it's like they started they just created their twitter account a week ago and they've got fifty thousand followers somehow it's like well <laughs> no uh, th that's not real. There's no way that you got so much hype and legitimacy that you've got tens of thousands of followers seemingly overnight. You can check this stuff on social blade where you'll see that, you know, maybe every day they were getting five to 10 followers. And then one day they got 50,000 followers all in one day makes it very obvious. There's no easy way to verify their claims. Um, whether it's because their white paper is very complex or just the available information is there's not enough or it just doesn't address the really important things. Most of it is just marketing jargon. It's not actual like um, proving anything or, you know, actually giving the information that you need. Uh, and the last one I already touched on, which is that they will make it seem like they specifically chose you to be a part of this elite opportunity. Uh, this is more for like uh, pump and dump groups who are trying to get more people to scam. You think you're getting some amazing opportunity, but you're actually the victim that they're taking the money from. Because again, the base premise of a pump and dump is, you know, a founder or a group of people they find something, they decide they want to try to, you know, scam people on whatever, uh, whatever asset they decide to choose. They choose this, then they get all this BS, fake news, misleading stuff, all this craziness. They get all this pumping. Everyone comes in, then they sell. And then as, and then they stop producing all this fake news and stuff that makes it seem so amazing. And then everyone else starts to panic and then they sell as well. Um, before the dump officially happens, 
they've already like gotten out and secured all of their profits. And then the people who get screwed are the people who saw that this thing was doing so well and came in after. Um, because again, it, it looks legit, right? It just looks like this is really good. There's all these people interested in it and there will be people that will be interested in it because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Um, first you do all this fake stuff it goes way up in value. A bunch of real investors come in and then it goes up in value more. So more investors come in because they're like, look, everyone's investing in this. This is doing so well, this is doing so well. But then all of those people lose all their money because the people at the beginning take all of that by dumping on the market. And they're essentially, all it really is, is just them taking the money from the people who came in later. And, uh, it's very similar to like a Ponzi scheme. So yeah, just you, you want to avoid these guys. You really want to avoid pump and dumps and they're not hard to avoid. You just don't need to be investing in these random altcoins that have very low market cap and are easily manipulated like this for the same reason that, uh, you know, if you ask most people, you know, what's your advice on stock investing? They don't say, yeah, you should invest in random penny stocks. It's the same situation. Um, I'll just, just with crypto, there's a lot less accountability, et cetera, for the people who are selling it or perpetrating these. And uh, cause there's anonymity and it's very easy to start a stock. I mean, a, a cryptocurrency versus a penny stock. There's a lot of like terrible penny stocks, but there's still a lot more work that goes into creating that. And you can't really do that anonymously. So. Yeah, there's just way less accountability in the crypto space and less regulation, making this much easier for them to actually perpetrate and do. Now, the big rug pull that happened recently was uh, Mark Cuban, and uh, he got rug pulled on the cryptocurrency called Titan. I shouldn't laugh because he probably barely lost any money. It was mostly the people who followed him and trusted his uh, his business you know, acumen and opinion and, and knowledge and insight. But here's the thing, even a legend who has millions upon millions of dollars, uh, you know, was on shark tank. He's, he's just super rich and famous. Even he can be taken in by a project's, uh, misleading marketing. I mean, I, I can't see exactly because I'm not going to like d dive super deep into Titan what they were claiming, but I saw some people that were claiming certain pairs to Titan uh, for liquidity were providing like 50,000% APY and stuff like that, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but I think at least I recall Mark Cuban was enticed at the fact that it was 206% APY. He did write about it originally on his blog, and that's what enticed so many people to come in and buy it. But they didn't realize this was the distribution phase. Once his influence was lended to this project, all of the people who originally perpetrated this sold everything they had, uh, which caused the dump to start. And it went from $60 to less than a dollar, uh, way less than a dollar, basically zero because it went to like 0. 0.00000 something here. Let's actually quickly double check exactly what it is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 0. 0.005 cents from $60, meaning that anyone who listened to Mark Cuban and bought it basically lost everything. I saw a couple instances of people talking about this, where one person said they put in like 23 or $24,000 of their life savings. And it went to like $6. They lost basically everything to everything they had was lost because of this with Mark. He said, um, he got out just before at least most of it. I don't know if that's real or not, but either way, I mean, he was barely affected by this. Mostly it was the people who fell for the fact that, you know, some celebrity or influencer is promoting something. So it must be legit. Uh, and they didn't do their own research, etc. cetera. Um, all of this hype, this coin, uh, went parabolic out of nowhere, you know, with very, with no real justification, all the red flags, uh, were hit for this project. 
and uh, people lost their life savings and stuff. And to him, it doesn't really matter because it was, you know, barely a hit. And that seemed the way that he addressed it. He's like, ah, whatever. Like it was a rug pull, but, uh, but I got out. So whatever. Well, what about all the people that you convinced to come in and they lost all their money because of what he said? So all this simply to say that uh, you shouldn't necessarily just trust some famous person's opinion about some cryptocurrency. I mean, I'm going to do um, a full video in the future on times that celebrities have endorsed things that have just completely failed or gone to zero or been scams or whatever because there was just an unreal amount of pump and dumps scams all this terrible stuff that are perpetuated uh by uh by celebrities and influencers who lend legitimacy to these projects by talking about them endorsing them whatever as he has done here so you know that was a big mess up for mark cuban um but really just to say that anyone can be tricked um just don't believe, you know, crazy marketing claims and um, and don't go chasing those kinds of things, right? Don't chase yields of 200%. That's insane. That's not realistic. That's not sustainable. Don't chase projects that promise you 100x, 1000x, because that's not realistic. That's not attainable. Um, anything that guarantees anything, you know, like it's just not realistic and it's not possible. So, you know, anyone can be tricked. No one is above this. Like no one is so smart that they like can, you know, navigate uh, pump and dump the perfect way or et cetera, et cetera. Because even some of the most powerful, richest people in the world cannot uh, navigate these properly. So the best thing you can do is just know the red flags and avoid getting into all this. I've talked about this before. It's really just the mindset you come in with and the expectations you come in with. I have a friend who invested in Ethereum and it uh, it's up like, you know, maybe like 70 or 80 percent since he bought. And he's like, ah, only 70, 80 percent. That's nothing. Previously, it was up like 200 percent. I want my 200 percent gains, not my 80 percent gains. That's nothing. People have been so desensitized by this bull market that they're expecting 100 percent gains on any investment, which is insane. Uh, people are just too hungry for insane gains and yields and everyone's expectations are completely out of whack and everyone is going to get wrecked going in with that kind of mindset. Uh, it's also important to note that something wasn't necessarily like not a pump and dump because it didn't go to zero either, right? You can have something go up, you know, 50% and then down 50%. So you know, there's no 100% way to know that something is a pump and dump or that it's already dumped or it's already pumped or whatever. The best thing you can do is just avoid, you know, tiny market cap cryptocurrencies, avoid things that are just going crazy for no reason. Don't buy after a thousand percent gains, you know, um, just stick to the really quality stuff. It would be the same advice that I would give in stocks. Don't invest in penny stocks, invest in blue chip companies that have great track records and good fundamentals. Same with cryptocurrency. Don't invest in random altcoins, invest in coins that have uh, good use cases behind them, projects, applications, good development team, uh, not ideally not anonymous, but it depends. I mean, Bitcoin is obviously perfect for what it has done. Um, but in terms of like accountability for companies that are doing different things, it's important that most of them aren't anonymous. All that kind of stuff needs to be taken into consideration before you invest in something, because most people are coming in here and basically throwing their money at anything and they're gambling, but pretending that it's an investment, investing is not even, not even close to speculating, right? It's so different. And I've talked about this before again, that you need a high conviction in the things you invest in. You can't just put $10 into some coin and think that you're going to get 50% or 50,000% APY and turn that into, you know, an insane amount of money because it's just not realistic. Where would the money come from? Uh, why wouldn't everyone be doing this? How is this possible? How is this sustainable? You're not the one lucky person who's smart enough to get in at the beginning who's going to take everyone else's money you're the gullible fool who believed that was going to happen. And now your money is getting taken. That's most of the cases. So like, don't 
risk it thinking that maybe you're the one t- the one person who got super lucky and got into this project early enough and that's why and da, da, da. no very very unlikely it's like winning the lottery except <laughs> except uh for the most part it's it's people doing like little scam lotteries and uh it's only them who are benefiting which is more or less what the lottery is since it's more or less i mean in canada it's like everyone pooling their money into this big pot and then the government takes a big chunk and then whoever wins the government takes another big chunk of the winnings so really it's like people just giving a ton of money to the government and then getting a little bit back to one person which uh talking about it in a high level makes it sound like a scam as well in my opinion uh you know don't be chasing these high yields this happens the same with stocks, you know, you just, you want to avoid all the craziness. Most of this is purely gambling. Uh, the worst expectations that I see are in DeFi. I'm just kind of going through my, my list of points here, make sure I've covered everything. So in, in conclusion, you know, <clears throat> to protect yourself and the people around you, keep it simple. Don't spend your time, you know, trying to find some random altcoin you think is gonna go a thousand X. Instead, you should focus your time and energy on good assets that you've researched. They don't have to be crypto. Um, But you know, if you see a video of someone promoting a coin or, you know, someone was paid to talk about something or, you know, they're talking about it and they, they don't claim that they were paid or anything, but they don't hold any of the coin lots and lots of indicators that you should be skeptical because if someone's talking about a coin and they don't hold it, well, more than likely they probably got paid to talk about it because there's no reason why they would be not holding something, but then also being like, you should buy this. So yeah, definitely keep all that in mind. Um, and just be, be more skeptical, be more cautious. Uh, crypto is rife with, uh, with scams and stuff. And it's just because, people have the wrong expectations and mindset when they're going in. It's not because there just are so many scams. I mean, A, it's because it's easier to scam in crypto with anonymity and the things that I previously mentioned. And B, um, people just have insane expectations coming in. It's more so about you and the mindset and the things that you come into the space with than it is, you know, a scammer being so good at marketing or whatever. Um, so, Again, you got to you got to have the right mindset going in, the self-awareness, just being mindful of all this stuff out there trying to convince you and trick you. Don't be brought in by uh these crazy grandiose claims of thousands of percent gains or interest or whatever. It's the same with stocks, right? Um they say like a 10% yielding stock is very risky. Don't be chasing yields. Uh, I go for about 5% on average for my stocks. So to then look at crypto and say, well, you need at least 100 to 10,000% for it to be a good investment. Like, no, that's just insane. Those people are going to get wrecked. Um, Again, I don't think uh, experts or intermediate users or experienced users in this space are going to fall for that kind of marketing and uh, and thus I think that they don't generally advertise to those people. So let me know, um, what are you investing in? Have you ever been tricked in a pump and dump? I see these, these groups, these signal groups all the time. I'm always being invited on Discord to join, um, which is super annoying. I included in the description a list of the 40 best pump and dump groups and uh this person like checks them and sees if they're legit and stuff all of them are were not like verified as legit they were all considered um illegitimate or they weren't checked yet so i thought that was kind of funny and i decided to include that as well because you know none of these groups are legit and it do not fall for them signal groups is like the next step up in sketchiness because again no one could tell the future either but pump and dumps are way more illegitimate and illegal, but they can get away with that stuff in crypto. Anyways, let me know. uh, Have you seen any pump and dumps in crypto? What are the red flags you look for? What do you invest in? Let me know all that good stuff in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching to the very end. If you did, uh, definitely comment hashtag number one ham in the comments below. And that way I know that you watched to the very end. Anyways, thank you so much. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scotty Business, signing off. Cheers.